Well, hello folks out there in YouTube land. Got an interesting show for you today. Yeah, we found out a lot last night. Uh, Colorado survived against North Dakota State and NC State. They've got some issues. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, NC State didn't look so good last night. Um, Colorado had some great moments, but boy, they almost lost that ball game. If not for a great quarterback play and then that phenomenal hunter, good grief. Colorado, they'd have got whooped. But uh, here's the thing. They do have a great quarterback. They do have a great wide receiver slash uh, cornerback. So that matters. But let's get into this. So obviously Colorado held on and just barely won by five points. Ball wound up down at the five-yard line for North Dakota State, but they ran out of time. You look at the quarterback comparisons. This Cam Miller was a really good player for North Dakota State. He uh, ran the ball beautifully, threw the ball nicely, and threw almost 300 yards. But look, he ran the ball for 81 yards. He was their whole offense just about. Then you look at Shador uh, Sanders. Killed it. Absolutely killed it. 26-34, 445 yards. The one interception was a fluke, and he was outstanding. Then you look at receiving Jimmy Horn Jr. Oh, man. Almost 200 yards. He was phenomenal. Travis Hunter, he did circus acts out there. I mean, he did everything but hang off the high wire, juggle, and catch touchdowns. I mean, it was ridiculous how well he played. And he played both ways the whole game like it's high school or something. I don't know how he has the energy to do that. You would think you'd get tired, but I guess he doesn't. Here's a big, big, big issue for Colorado. They only ran for 59 yards against North Dakota State, 2.6 average. And they've got some good running backs. That Hayden guy from Ohio State's very good. That's unacceptable. That offensive line should be able to push around North Dakota State. They're not exactly known for their defense. They're known for their offense. So all the changes he made with the offensive line, it didn't help with the run game any. Now, Sanders did have a little bit of time to throw the ball. Not a ton, but he had some time. So they have improved the offensive line, but it's not way improved. And now, granted, it's the first game, but again, this is not against you know the absolute cream of the crop of uh, talent. So Colorado's defense still, it stinks. It's not very good at all. And that was their problem last year. It was terrible. And this year, it looks like it's not going to be a ton better. They did uh, handle the run a little bit better against uh, North Dakota State than they would have last year, so they've improved their rush defense. I did notice that, except the quarterback. They couldn't control him at all. But they were able to, uh, in obvious running situations, handle North Dakota State. So I did see an improvement there. Uh, Colorado's got three NFL players, big time, probably first round players. So uh, they're going to be leaning on them heavily. But this was not a very good start. But the reality is they got the W, and that's what's important. And as I've told you, Dion and the media are kind of like this. The honeymoon is over. You might as well just know that. And when he got done with the game, first thing he did was kind of speak to that. Some of you got upset that we got a W. Some of you, you know, I'm really mad that we didn't get the L. So God bless you all. You have to wait again till next week. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, so you can tell. If they'd have lost that ball game, they would have been asking him tough questions and he would not have uh, responded very uh, positively. <laughs> so we'll see how this rolls. Um, they do have some fantastic players and they did get the W, which is what's important. But I'm not – that five-and-a-half win total that uh, Vegas has got them for, I could see them going six and six or five and seven pretty easily, which still would be an improvement. you got to remember they went from one and 11 to four and eight. If they won five or six games this year, that would still be going in the right way. And I, you see they have much more talent than they had last year. So they're, they're getting there. It's just you're going to have to have some patience, and that's hard to do because Dion comes out there as Dion, you know, very uh, brash, and he's wanting uh, results right away, and then he's kind of cross with the media, and the media's cross with him. So it, it could get a little bit ugly this year if they have some losses, which I expect them to have. But as far as uh, Sanders is concerned, that guy's a first-round draft pick, and so is Hunter, and maybe Horn as well. So they do have some strong uh, players to lean on. So anyway, and maybe that defense will improve over uh, the season. Their very first game in North Dakota State, they're good. They're, they're very good. So probably not the best scheduling by uh, Colorado to bring in an FCS team that everybody thinks, oh, it's North Dakota State, you can beat them. <laughs> right.
You, if you're going to uh, put in an FCS team, don't pick them. All right, now let's talk about North Carolina State. Tennessee Vols are playing them next week, and we got a pretty good uh, look at them last night. And they've got some real issues and some problems that Tennessee should be able to exploit. Now, folks, it looks like they won this game easily, 38-21. to 21. But if you look, they were down 21-17 to 17 after the third quarter. They were losing by four going into the fourth quarter against Western Carolina, which is, you know, that's not some great team. The last 30 times they've played an FBS uh, program, they've lost every time. They, they are not some giant killer. So that's pretty disappointing by NC State. Let's take a look at some of their numbers. Grayson McCall, these numbers wound up looking much better towards the end, but if you look at his QBR, it was 51, which is really low. He wasn't very accurate, especially during uh, significant parts of the game. He did throw one bad interception. He wound up with some TDs, though, and had some, uh, had some good series. But he's not the guy he was two years ago. If you'll remember, he was killing it at Coastal Carolina. And then they got a new coach. And last year, he I think he had like 10 touchdowns and six interceptions. He only threw for about 2,000 yards. So way below his numbers the two years prior when he was kind of the phenom. And last night, I just didn't see the accuracy. I didn't see the timing. And I know it was the first game. But you're playing against Western Carolina. When you play against Tennessee, you're not going to be back there very long having a lot of time because we will get after him like you can't believe. He's going to be probably kind of running for his life, honestly. We've got some serious edge guys that will just flat pin their ears back and come at you. And they're also not going to be able to run the ball against us very well. It's really our calling card. Tennessee's defensive line is so strong against the rush. I think we wound up being second in rush defense in the SEC last year, we spent a lot of time at number one, and that's in the SEC. I think we allowed like a little over 100 yards a game in rushing, which is fantastic. So uh, NC State's got their work ahead of them. Whew, I, I can tell you that right now. They do have two great wide receivers. Uh, Concepcion, it was fantastic. Nine receptions for 121. He is really good. They also have a guy by the name of Hollywood Smothers, who um, is very electric. They need to figure out how to get the ball in his hands. Those are their two best players. They're very electric. And uh, Tennessee needs to make sure they don't let those two guys beat them because they're the two players that really can hang with us without too much trouble. They're very good. And these fellas here, this is Locked On Wolfpack. And uh, they'll kind of give you an idea. They follow, obviously, NC State very closely. And they'll give you an idea what they thought of the game here. Well, it was an opening game. The fans were there. Both teams played on the field. NC State won the game, but uh, did we feel great about well, that? Go for it. Very disappointed in the O-line tonight. Not getting any yeah. type of push on Western Carolina. It's a massive concern because of who you play next weekend in Tennessee. Right. They have one of the better defensive lines perceived to be in this entire in this entire country. And so if you can't develop a, a strong sense of just dominating on the run against Western Carolina, that's a big-time question mark uh, as we leave week one going into week two. Yeah, I look at our running game. And this is becoming a, a problem that is in perpetuity a little bit. It, it really is. And that's the part that worries me the most because this isn't a thing of, of hey, we don't know um, if it's a problem with not having enough talent in the backfield or we don't know if it's a problem with not having enough talent up front. It seems to be a consistent thing that has stressed out across multiple offensive coordinators, multiple different iterations of the backfield. I mean, it, it just seems to be a thing that – Regardless of what's going on with scheme or with talent, we still struggle to run the ball so mightily, which is is definitely a concern. Yeah, um, and here they talk about Grayson McCall. They're concerned about some accuracy, et cetera. Now I'm going to get into McCall. Uh, talked all off season about how accuracy is his calling card. Tough night tonight. Tough night tonight. And I think you can maybe accredit some of that to first game jitters. But, I mean, I, I really only go as far as, like, maybe the first or second quarter. After that, man, you got to lock in. And it just wasn't there for the majority of the night outside of, like, maybe one or two drives. I thought he had a couple really nice throws to Noah Rogers, a couple really nice throws to Wesley, uh, Wesley Grimes. Kate yeah, so they're obviously concerned uh, after this ball game, which is understandable. You know, they thought they would probably blow out Western Carolina without too much trouble which they, they really should have. Um, they're a team that people I think very highly of NC State as a um, possible ACC uh, competitor to win the title. I don't know. After what I saw last night, it didn't look so good. 
Um, we play them next week. Obviously, it'll be a neutral site. It's a very exciting ball game. It'll be Saturday at 7.30, so it's a primetime game. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on that ball game. We'll get to see uh, how Tennessee handles NC State, but I feel much better about that ball game now. I think uh, they're going to struggle running the ball against us. I think uh, Grayson McCall is going to be – he's going to have a lot of pressure put on him. Oh, man, that is way too much pressure. And if we can cover those uh, two wide receivers, I think we'll be okay. I really do. I don't think they're going to be able to run on us, and I don't think they'll be able to stop our offense. I didn't see anything in their defense that scared me or made me uh, concerned. So, I mean, you can always lose. NC State absolutely could beat us, but I don't like their chances. I think we'll be favored by at least 10 points going into that ball game, depending on how we play tomorrow, which I think will handle UT Chattanooga without any trouble at all. Anyway, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's know continue to cover all these big college sports stories. If you've not subscribed, hit this little button right here. It will help you get my videos. It just makes it easier for you. It doesn't cost you a dime. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.